Alrighty. Greetings, everybody. Uh, it's the first live stream, or my first live stream of 2024 at least. I don't know if it's the first live stream ever <laughs> of 2024, but it's my first live stream. Um, so welcome if this is the first time you've joined me. Um, and welcome if you've joined me before. <laughs> uh, I do mostly WordPress related live streams. Um, I'm just going to turn the volume down on the music a little bit. Um, mostly WordPress development focused live streams. Um, welcome, Merz. Mer 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 I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I find uh, nicknames to be weird, <laughs> but they're cool, but they're weird to try and pronounce. Um, yes, so my focus for 2024 um, is going through the process of contributing to WordPress. Um, so if you don't know me, I am a sponsored contributor to the WordPress project. I create um, educational content for learn.wordpress.org. Um, that content includes uh, online tutorials, video tutorials, lessons, lesson plans, online workshops. Um, and something that I'm going to be focusing on for the rest of 2024 at least, or the majority of 2024, is going to be the process of contributing to WordPress. So if contributing to WordPress is interesting to you, then hopefully this live stream will be interesting to you. Um, if it's not something you're interested in, then maybe it'll be something you become interested in. Uh, or maybe you just like sitting, watching somebody fumble around <laughs> with things. Uh, but everybody is welcome. Um, I want to just take this opportunity to say that I recently reconfigured and reset up my streaming my OBS streaming setup. So if the sound is wonky or weird or too loud or anything, please let me know uh, and I'll do my best to fix it. Uh, I'm not the best when it comes to streaming software, but I'm always willing to learn. But at the moment, all of my, all of my things look right. Um, are you, uh, for those of you, are you hearing the background music? There's some background music playing it's just starting now. So if somebody could just let me know if they're hearing that music as well. Um, you should be hearing it, but I'm not seeing it show up on my on my desktop audio setting. So this is very silent. Let me see if I can... Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up a little bit on here. I do have it very quietly in the background, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Okay. I got some confirmation that folks can hear it, so that's good. If that if that's ever too loud, let me know as well, and we'll turn that down a bit. But I like just having a little bit of background music in the stream. Okay. Um, so if you have never contributed to Core before, um, that's where I'm going to kind of start today. Um, a good place to get started would be... Thank you. Yes, it is meant to be very subtle, so thank you for confirming that. Um a good place to start is the makewordpress.org core channel. Um, I need to just check something else here. Oh, I haven't set my resolution correctly, so I'm going to just change that quickly. One second, everybody. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, makes everything a bit bigger on the stream, which is like how I like it to be. Um, so if you've never contributed to core before, this is the URL to visit. Uh, I'm going to share it in the chat with anybody who's following along. Um, Basically, this is the core WordPress team. Um, oh, I can't. <laughs> that's embarrassing. I can't share things to the chat because I haven't logged in. Um, so give me a second here, folks. I'm going to just take a tab off screen here because I need to show my passwords and things. Actually, no, I can do it over here. So let me do that quickly. Uh, it's terrible when you haven't even logged into your own Twitch chat. Um, <laughs> to be able to communicate with the chat. That's embarrassing. You can tell it's the first the first stream of this year. Oh, it's trying to ask me to sign up. I don't want to sign up. I want to log in. Uh, log in there. And let's do this. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just logging into... The Twitch chat. There we go. Now I'm connecting to the chat so now I can paste things um, for you. There we go. So that's the link that I'm working off. Um, this is the core 
the core team within the WordPress project. Um, and the good place to get started would be to go to the handbook. There is a handbook for every team. It's usually linked in the top menu here. Um, and in the handbook, there are some chapters around how to get started. And there is a section on the, about the team. There is a section on contributing with testing and then contributing with code and contributing with docs and, if, and then various other things. We want to focus on contributing with code. So if you click on that, it talks about um, why contributes, um, we're all human, who the committers are, various bits and pieces of information here. It's always a good idea to read through all of this. Um, but I'm going to focus today on the Gitified version of the WordPress core repository. So originally, um, WordPress core was managed using something called SVN. Um, and SVN is, is, is known as Subversion. Sorry, I'm just checking messages on my phone here. Um, and so that's originally what folks used to, and, and still does to this day. WordPress still uses SVN to this day. But it has also been mirrored over to a GitHub repository um, using Git. And you can find it here. Uh, there are two places you can find it. The one is if you don't want to have to use GitHub, there's a mirror at uh, develop.git.wordpress.org. So if you just want to use Git on the command line and you're happy to do it that way, you can use that. If you want to use GitHub, which a number of open source contributors do use, um, you can go there and you can get set up with, with all of that. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to focus on the process of getting this all set up. Um, I've got an hour and a half, but I don't think I'll need the full hour and a half. Um, so in the readme, so this is a mirrored version of the WordPress um, code base um, and you can work on it in Git. And then what happens is that if you're working on a core ticket, which is what we'll probably look at doing next week, um, you can link to pull requests in the GitHub repository um, and, you can, and you can make things work and happen that way. So for now, I'm just going to focus on the GitHub side of things. So that's my profile. I'm just going to focus on getting the local environment set up. Um, and then once it's set up next week, we'll dive into looking at some tickets, seeing if we can fix some tickets um, or at least start working on some tickets. Um, okay, so let's go down here. And there are a couple of ways you can get set up. The first way is to use GitHub code spaces. So if you're comfortable with GitHub code spaces, you can use that. Um, if you, and I just want to mention, sorry, before we get going, if anybody has any questions about all of this stuff, as I'm working through it, you're welcome to post your questions in the chat, happy to answer them. So if you have anything you're not sure of, anything does make sense, feel free to post them in the chat. There is sometimes a slight delay, um, but I, I will keep an eye out for them and I will answer them, um, as best I can. All right. I'm just moving some things around on my screen here to make the chat window a bit bigger. Um, No, I don't want extra viewers. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> for local development, um, there is a a local development environment called uh, WPENV, which is spoken about here, and it uses uh, Node.js to manage it and to run it. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to focus on today. You don't have to use the the development environment that, that they talk about here. You can use pretty much any other WordPress related development environment. Um, I'll maybe dive into that in a second and show you how that all works. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on the one that is recommended. Um, I already have Node.js installed on my machine. So if I open up my ter terminal and I type node minus V, no, maybe not that one, maybe that one, there we go. I've got version 18 installed. Um, I see that the documentation says WordPress currently supports Node version 20 and NPM version 10. So I need to get that updated. Now, fortunately for me, I use something called NVM. NVM is a Node version manager. Uh, yes, I will share the link for GitHub for you. There we go. Uh, let me pop that in the chat there. There we go. Um, so NVM is a Node version manager tool. I'll share that link as well. Uh, and it basically allows you to um, easily install and manage different versions of Node. 
Um, and what it also does, which I quite like about it, is it allows you to switch between versions of Node per, on a per project basis very quickly. So for example, because I have, so let me show you this NVM minus V will show me what version of NVM is installed. Um, if you've never installed NVM before, there is a tutorial on learn.wordpress.org, uh, which I will share with you as well. That actually is titled Installing Node.js and NPM for Local WordPress Development. And this talks you through the process of installing NVM. Um, and in this tutorial, there's a video, there's a video portion and a text portion. Uh, in this tutorial, I talk about how you can install it for um, Mac OS and Linux. So if you're using Mac or if you're using Linux, there are the process to install. I also talk you through one way to install it in Windows. Um, my suggested way to do it in Windows is to use PowerShell, but there are other alternatives that you can use. Um, but I, I, I just like using PowerShell in Windows. That's just a personal preference. Um, go away. <clears throat> so I talk you through all of that. There's also uh, something called NVM Windows that you can install. So there's many different options. And then once you've got that installed, then you can use NVM to install the different versions of Node that you might need. So if we run NVM list on my machine right now, you'll see I have version 16, version 18, and then whatever the system version is. Um, so because I need version 20 for WordPress develop, I can just run NVM install 20, um, NVM install 20, and NVM will go ahead and get version 20 of Node for me, download it, install it, do all the things that I needed to do. Um, so that's very, very cool. That's now installed and being used. So let's go NPM, let's go node minus V. So that confirms version 20 is installed. If we go NPM minus V, that's version 10 for NPM, which is great. But if I need to switch, so let's just do a quick NVM list here. So you'll see now I've got version 16, 18, and 20 installed. I can, if I want to, I can go NVM use 18. Um, and then it'll start using version 18 in this terminal instance. So if I now say node minus V, it's back to version 18. And if I say NPM minus V, it's back to version nine. So that's one of the reasons I like using NVM. Um, it's one tool that I install and then it does everything else for me through, through commands. Uh, it allows me to switch quickly and easily. Uh, whatever the default version that is installed will be the default version that, that's available when you open up your terminal. So if I say, if I exit the terminal, I'll go NVM minus B now. No, not NVM, sorry. Node minus V. It's, oh, it's, it's because it's back. It was, it was, I said use 20, but I didn't say set the default to 20. Um, so now I could say something like NVM use 20. And there we go. And now it's using version 20. Let me show you again. Let me exit out of here and we'll go back and we'll see what version is now in use. Uh, it's NVM will be version 18 again. So there's a way that you can set uh, 20 to default, which I can never remember how to do. Uh, so I'm going to check in here quickly. Um, let's show this some documentation. Uh, I think it's under usage. You can say, uh, which one is it? Use exec run. There's a special command that you can run to say use version 20 as the default. Um, or use latest as the default or something. I might have it in my, in my random access memory page on my blog. Let's have a look here. Um, no, I don't. Okay, that's fine. So I'll say NVM set default. Uh, uh, I think it's this one. Uh, here we go. There we go. NVM alias default, and you set the, the alias, the default version that you want. Um, so I'm actually going to. So what version is version 2020? 20, 20 is 2011. So I think you can just do this. I think you can just say NVM alias default 20. Um, so let's try that. So that's now set the default to 20. So if I exit out of here and I log back in and I say in node minus V, cool, we're back to version 20. Um, but if I say NVM list, we've got 16, 18 and 20 installed. So now I can jump between 18 and 20 if I need to. Um, I've got a feeling for the learn WordPress code base that needs version 18. I think we still need to update that to version 20. Um, so I'll just leave it on version 20 and just switch to 18 as and when I need it. 
Um, okay, I'm going to make a quick note about Alias in my random access memory page. So this is a page that I have on my blog that I sort of are bookmarks of things that I need to remember for myself. Um, I've, I've managed this for a number of years now. It just helps me remember where things are. So I'm going to add a new section here quickly, which just says, um, set uh, default Node.js version in NVM. Um, and we'll just bold that. And there we go. I'm just going to leave it as 20. Um, so that's the fun part of live stream, folks. You get to see all kinds of things that I do every day. <laughs> all right. So that is that. So now I've got version 20 installed, um, which is great. So I'm going to close this down, close this down. We don't need track right now. So we've got version 20 and NPM version 10. Let's just check that. NPM... Fees version 10. Excellent. Um, you can also install uh, Node by default using Brew in Mac, using Choco in Windows, using Apt in Ubuntu, for example. Uh, many ways to do it. I just prefer NVM. Um, I also need to have Docker installed and running. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, I do have Docker installed on my local PC. Uh, I only use Docker when I'm working with uh, the WPENV local development environment. I don't use it for anything else. So the two the two code bases that I that I use Docker for are the WordPress develop code base when I'm working with that local development environment, and the learn WordPress learn WordPress all code base because they both use the same um, local environment underneath the hood. So they both need Docker to be installed. Um, okay, so it says here that once I have node and once i have docker i need to ensure docker is running which it is that's good and then i need to git clone this repository and then change to that directory and then run these four commands um, so i personally have the following uh, folder structure set up so my folder structure is i have a development folder and then i have a projects folder inside of development and then inside of projects i have all the code that i regularly work on uh, if I list that out now, you'll see a bunch of things in here that I that I work on. One of them is the where is it? The Learn WordPress code base. There's also some other things that I've worked on and tested and played with in and around WordPress, um, and then just things I'm checking out, like uh, Flappy PHP Pant. If you ever want to see what that is, that's a bit of fun. Uh, I'll share this quickly. It's a very simple Flappy Bird-like game built in PHP. Uh, so if you're interested in building games in PHP, go and check this out. It's quite fun. I will pop the link in the chat quickly. Anyway, so that's where I keep all my projects that I'm working on. And so I'm going to get clone this. Um, if it's not clear, which notice they don't actually say it on here, but you do need to have Git installed on your local machine. Um, so depending on what system you're using, you'll need to install Git. Uh, you can just go to git.sh, I think it is to, no, not git.sh, what is it? Um, Oh, there we go, git-scm.com. That's where you can find to install Git and all the different versions of Git there. You can use Brew as well. You can use Choco as well if you're on Windows. Many other ways to do it, but you will need to have that installed. And then you can run the command. So let's close this down. So then in my terminal, I'm going to just clear this and I'm going to git clone WordPress develop. And that takes a while. So that's a whole bunch of code. It's downloading, it's downloading in history, uh, it's downloading various other things. It might be not too slow on my machine because I think it might get the cached version, which I, because I had deleted, a pre I had downloaded it previously and deleted the directory before this live stream. So it, uh, it's not going too slowly. Okay. So while that's being downloaded, um, oh, it's done. <laughs> okay, so once that's done, now we have the code on our machine. What I like to do at this point in time is I like to open up PHP Storm, which is the PHP editor that I use. Um, you can also use Visual Studio Code if you use that or whatever tool you use. I like to now go and just open up that project uh, directory and just kind of see what's going on in there. So if I go over to my development and I go over to projects, 
and I go and find WordPress develop. There it is there. Um, the other reason I do this now is because uh, PHP Storm does a, a process called indexing, where it indexes all of the files in the project. So now would be a good time for it to, to do all that indexing. Um, it starts asking me if I want to install dependencies. I'm not going to do this here. I'll do this in the command line. But you'll see here, very, very. you can't see it because my head's in the way. Let me move my head out the way. So right at the bottom of my screen here, PHP Storm is indexing all these files. Um, and so that's, what I, that's one of the reasons why I open it up now and let it do all of that. Um, PHP Storm also starts asking me a bunch of questions. I'm going to move my head out the way a little bit so you can see those questions. Um, it says, do I want to run Composer install? I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I might as well enable WordPress support. Uh, PHP Storm has a thing where you can, by default, enable WordPress support. That supports things like WordPress function auto completion and various other things. So I'm going to enable that support, um, but I'm going to point it to the source directory inside of this project. So I'm going to open this up here and go to development, projects, um, WordPress develop, and I'm pointing to the SRC or the source directory. Um, and I'm going to go okay there. So that's gonna do some more indexing, which I'm, I'm quite okay with. Uh, let me move my head back in the corner here and we can get on with things. All right, now the other cool thing about this is once I've checked out the code, I don't need to have the browser window open anymore to run the commands. The readme file is included in this code. So that's another reason why I open up the project file now. So if I was to be disconnected off the internet, it wouldn't matter. I could just follow the instructions here. Okay, so now I need to start doing all kinds of NPM things. So it's NPM install, NPM run dev, uh, and all of this. So I'm gonna start by doing that. As I mentioned earlier, you don't have to use, so. Before we go any further, this local development environment is based on something called WP ENV or WordPress ENV. Um, and WP ENV lets you set up a local WordPress environment for building and testing plugins and themes. And also you can use it for uh, testing core, working on core. Um, it was announced in March of 2020. So it's been around for about almost four years now. Um, but it's something that the WordPress core team is in the process of looking at, not necessarily moving away from, uh, but possibly adding another option. So this was originally sort of la launched as the WordPress project sort of uh, recommended tool for local development. Um, but the problem was that Docker changed their licensing fairly recently. And so folks are looking into other options. And one of those options that folks are looking to is something called WP Now. Um, WP Now is something that was launched by a developer team at uh, WordPress.com, which is the, um, the hosted version of WordPress uh, managed by the company Automatic. Um, and this uses something called the WordPress Playground, which if you haven't heard about the, the Playground before, uh, I'll share that with you very quickly and I'll share the link in the chat. WordPress Playground is basically a version of WordPress that actually can run in your browser. Uh, it's kind of cool to see it in action. Um, it's basically using something called WebAssembly. Uh, so it has, it's a fully functional instance of WordPress running inside the browser. Uh, so it's all packaged as this uh, WASM module, I think it is. Um, and what's cool about the Playground is that recently uh, the WordPress plugins team, or maybe not the plugins team, the meta team, uh, they released the option for you to use uh, WordPress Playground to create previews for your WordPress plugins. So if you're a plugin or theme developer, uh, this is a very cool uh, little tool. So I wanna show you one of my plugins and how that works quickly. I know we're going completely off topic here, um, but there's a plugin, is it? yes. It's a plugin that I help maintain, I haven't updated for years, I need to, uh, called list all URLs. And there's this test preview button. And that that is because I've got the Playground instance configured for this thing. So if I click on test preview here, it opens up a new tab it opens up an instance of the WordPress Playground and it automatically installs the plugin, uh, this list URLs plugin for me in that instance of the Playground. So what the user can then do is they can test out the plugin. Uh, they can see how it works, they can see what it does. Um, it does take a few seconds to get going. But once it's done and there, uh, there it is, and you'll see what you're also able to do, which I think is quite cool, is you're able to direct users straight to whatever settings pages you might have or whatever functionality within your plugin. Um, so now I've, direct, I've directed the user straight to the list URLs page 
they can now actually test this functionality out right here um, and they can see how it works before they install it on their WordPress site. So this is very, very cool. Um, I'll link, I've will link. i linked the Playground instance as well already. Um, so go, do go and check that out. But anyway, the point is WP now runs on WP Playground. Um, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to test out Playground yet for local development or not. I was planning on doing it. Uh, I was actually planning on doing it last year. Um, but I ran into some trouble with it, not trouble with Playground, trouble with my time <laughs> uh, to get to testing it. So for now, I'm going to focus on WP MV purely because it is the one that is listed in the documentation. It is the one that is suggested by the core developers to use. At a future live stream, I definitely want to try out WP now. I want to see how it works. I want to see if it can work for core development. Um, so look look ahead for that one. I, I do plan on doing that sometime in the, in the future. Um, doesn't show up when I visit your plugin page. So are you saying when you go to list URLs, it doesn't show up for you? Uh, if you go to, let me pop the, let me pop the, um, the URL there. Uh, that might be because, I don't, I'm not sure, but is it possibly a translated version of the page? That might be one of the reasons. Uh, it might be a bug with a, with a playground, I'm not sure. Um, so if you, if you, it only shows the download button. Okay, um, and are you, are you click when you click on the link does it change to because uh, i know wordpress has sort of translated versions of the plugin pages does does yours perhaps uh switch to a translated version um i wonder i wonder if it's because i'm logged in let me see um let me see what happens if i log out let's see if it works then uh da, 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 da. ah there we go it's because i'm not logged in um so that's why it doesn't work interesting i was not aware of that um so if you do have a profile on WordPress.org, why don't you do me a favor and log in and see if it then does show for you. Um, and if you if it does show for you, then it's obviously only for logged in users. Um, and that's maybe something to, okay, so some of you are logged in and it's not showing on your view either. That's very interesting. Um, I wonder if, I'm not going to debug it now, but I wonder if it's the way I've implemented it. Um, I will I will do some testing on that. Thank you for for letting me know that, folks. I'll do some testing um, and and see why that why that's happening. Uh, it's a fairly new feature. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. Um, so I'm logged in, but no test button there. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, folks. Thank you for that feedback. Um, I'm not a, I'm not I'm not the person who manages that, so I don't know why it isn't working for you. Um, but I'll definitely dive in a bit deeper when I've got some time later and see why that's why that's happening. Um, all right. So I just went on a tangent. Let's go. Let's go back to core development. So let's run. I should have actually been running npm install while I was waffling, because <laughs> then it could have. Oh dear, what's going on here? Um, oh, I'm not inside the WordPress develop folder. So I need to switch to WordPress develop. Um, and I need to run npm install, and then this is going to install a whole bunch of. Th so it's the JSON file inside of the assets directory. It's called a blueprint. Let me see if there's a if there's something that I missed. Uh, hmm. There's no setting anywhere. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to I'm going to check something here. While this is doing its thing, let's see. That's that's still busy. Um, so let's go and do this. Uh, let's log out, and then I'm going to log in. I have another another test uh, a profile that I use to test um, updating content to learn WordPress. So let's see. That's interesting. It only seems to show for me because I am the logged in user, who is the main. I'm the maintainer of one of on these plugins. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. Well, thanks for pointing that out, folks. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make a note of that on the on the post where this was uh, originally added, which I think was, I think it was on the Meta channel. This is still busy doing things. Um, I think it was in Meta. So let's see if I can find it. Developer resources, no, meeting agenda, no. Yeah, plugin previews, here we go. Are now available for opt-in. Um, ah, 
Hang on. Ah, there's a live preview button. Okay, let's see if let's see if we can fix this together, folks. Um, this is fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this. Um, yes, yes, that seems to be the case. So I need to go to the Advanced View tab, uh, which is down here. And then I need to go to Toggle Live Preview. There we go. Please toggle the Live Preview link for all the URLs. Okay. So now that's solved. So now those of you who've tested earlier, would you mind testing it again for me and let me know if you can see that live preview? Um, I'm not going to lie. I love the fact that my live stream about contributing just helped me fix something on my plugins. So thank you for your <laughs> your feedback there. Awesome. Um, Igneous Fairy says, Fairy says, visible now. Yeah, it works. Cool. Okay, awesome. Thank you, folks. Um, helping me fix bugs in my code <laughs> on, on, on live. <laughs> um, cool. That's that's excellent. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I missed that. Um, that's good that they. That's actually good that they added that feature. I thought it was out by default. Okay, so you can check out the live preview there. You can test it out. If you're a plugin, if you're a plugin developer, uh, and you have a plugin on the .org repositories, I do recommend testing that feature out, giving it a try. Um, you can, I believe, um, in the blueprint, you can define. Um, that certain plugins need to be required for your plugin, so you install those plugins at the same time. So it's, yeah, it's very. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this link as well. So if any of you are plugin developers, go check that out, um, and go and go and see if it's something you wanna you wanna try out. Okay, npm install is done, so that's perfect. So we managed to install npm and fix something else at the same time. That's great. Um, so now let's build the dev environment. So it's npm run build dev. Uh, so let's do that um, and this is just basically building any kind of um, development assets for you know javascript and css and all those kind of things specifically most of this functionality is required because of the block editor uh, the block editor is built as you i'm sure you all know built on javascript um, built using javascript on top of react so it uses uh, webpack and these sort of build steps to to generate all that code so you need to run that build before you can start start using uh, the core code base um, so that takes a few moments um, while that's running we'll get the next command which is to start the local environment uh, local development environment um, this essentially as far as I remember, it will download the relevant Docker images, um, set them up, and then and then connect your code to those images or containers as they're called in Docker. Um, so it's busy downloading those now, uh, and it looks like that was that was pretty quick. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, and if you open up your Docker toolbar, you should actually be able to see those containers running. Uh, so there we go. So there's a whole bunch of containers running. There's the WordPress containers. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger. Uh, so yeah, so the, and there's some WordPress CLI containers happening. I don't know where those came from. Probably, I think this might come with, I don't know, last started 27 days ago. So it must be something else I was doing 27 days ago. But here's all the WordPress develop stuff. So there's a, there's a WordPress develop one container. There's a PHP container, which obviously handles the PHP side of things. And a MySQL container, which handles the database and all those things. Um, some of these containers, I think, need a bit of a cleanup, but I'll do that. I'll do that after this. Um, all right. And then the last thing you need to do is run npm run env install. Uh, I think what this does is set up the actual database. Um, it probably sets up the default data. Uh, it looks like it's downloading maybe some things as well. I'm not sure what, what it is actually downloading. Um, I could dive into it if I really wanted to, but I don't mind letting it do its thing. Um, so while I wait for that to happen, I'm going to grab a sip of coffee. And then we will see what happens. Ignis Vary says, got any recommendations for a Docker tutorial? Um, unfortunately, I don't. And that's because I personally don't really like Docker. <laughs> um, I only use Docker when I have to because of the WordPress local development environment. Um, I actually prefer to run my WordPress local development environments in a different way, um, which if there's time at the end of this, I'll show you um, if you're interested. Um, 
But ultimately, what I ended up doing was just becoming comfortable with the fact that some environments require Docker, making sure I have Docker, the free version, just installed and running the Docker client, um, and then just running the commands that that I'm needed to, to work with Docker. Um, other than that, I've never read any tutorials myself. I've just kind of fumbled my way through. Um, what I do like about the WordPress one is that it actually gives you, um, because they're using NPM, there are ways to run things using NPM. So to run a WPCLI command, uh, there is an NPM option to say run the command in the in the Docker container. Um, but yes, personally, um, I, don't, I don't like Docker. I don't like the way it works. Um, I don't like the fact that, for example, your containers are your containers are all separate, and if you want to log into the MySQL database, you've got to log into the container. And how to get there is is not clear to me. I like access to things straight away. So personally, I just use it, uh, but I'm certainly no expert in Docker at all, and I can't recommend any tutorials. Uh, so if anybody else, I see WP Meister sharing a tutorial there. If anybody else has some tutorials on how to use Docker, please share them. Um, uh, but I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, okay, so with that done, uh, according to according to this, everything should be set up and running. So I should be able to go to localhost colon 8889 and I should see WordPress develop running. And there it is, localhost 889. That's another thing I don't like about Docker is the, is the port numbers. Anyway, <laughs> so there is my localhost 889. It's all set up and ready. It's using the latest theme. Um, I do have an option to log into the admin directory which I think they do. Yeah, here they do. They speak about that here. So these are the database credentials. I'm not going to need them. To log into the site, I can go to this link uh, and the username and password is admin and password. So we'll go admin and password um, and that will log me into the admin dashboard. This is another thing I find with, with Docker instances and I don't know if it's related to my setup um, or, or what the case has be, but I sometimes find them to be very slow. Um, as I say, I'm not sure if it's something to do with my configuration, but sometimes I find it to be slow. So that's just a personal thing. And here we go. Here we have the very latest of WordPress. You can see at the bottom, it says here you're using the development version 6.5 alpha 56966. Uh, so it's the most recent uh, pushed version of WordPress. It was committed to when? Uh, literally one hour ago, we got some updates. So it's the most recent version. So this is a great way to test out WordPress versions that are coming up. Uh, test out new functionality, see what breaks, see what doesn't. Um, and this is what you can do, use to test your local development. Um, you can then create a pull request in GitHub. You can link it to a track ticket uh, and you can and you can do whatever you need to from there. Okay, so that's my local dev environment. Um, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to do any diving into, into code today. What I also, also would just like to show you today is the alternate way that you can work with the core code base. Uh, this is the way I prefer to do it. This is just my personal preference. So I have a um, a setup that is kind of custom to myself. It's something that I created called WP Local EMV. Um, it basically runs, instead of running in a container, it is a virtualized Ubuntu server on my machine. Uh, it uses something called Multipass, uh, which is a canonical product, canonical of the folks that, that uh, are the company behind Ubuntu. Uh, the, the, the founder the, co the founder of Ubuntu is the CEO of Canonical. Um, and basically it allows you to set up and run a virtual Ubuntu server on your machine. Now, the reason I want to show you this is not because I want to show you multipass, but I want to show you if you're using any other kind of local development environment where you don't have these commands that allow you to set up the environment and it all just works and it all just configures, you need to kind of do things a bit manually yourself. Um, so I want to show you that now. So let's say you're using something like maybe local WP or dev Kinster, or you're using things like this Laragon, um, there's devil box. There's all these different kinds of local development environments that are not specific to WordPress, but they create a local web server on your machine. And then you have to configure the virtual host yourself and configure maybe the local development URL yourself or whatever the case may be. And then you install the software manually. This is how you would set up the development environment in a manual way. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to create 
in my in my setup what i'm first going to do is i'm just going to stop um i'm going to stop the local environment just for now so it's not running anymore um nvm run env stop so it's nvm run env stop i think that's what it was just check that oh no it's env hyphen env hyphen stop uh and now it's basically going to shut everything down and hmm? oh e <laughs> evn can't spell today env stop there we go um okay so that's stopped let's just check that it is stopped okay that still works though that's weird <laughs> did i do something wrong oh it hasn't actually stopped nvm no that's right no it's npm no it's npm npm run nv stop i can't read today let's try that again <laughs> here we go okay so it removes containers it stops containers if I now refresh this, this should stop working. That stops working. That's great. What I can also do now is I can shut down Docker, <laughs> which I don't like to keep lying around. So I'm going to shut that down. Uh, and that's all. So that's all often not working right now. Okay. So imagine, if you will, you're using whatever your preferred local environment is, um, and you've set up a blank uh, local site to do WordPress development. The first step, and I'm just going to uh, change direction here and just remove the WordPress develop, RMSR word, no, I'm still there. Uh, CD there, RMSRF WordPress word, press develop. Um, that could take a while because it's quite a big folder. While that's doing that, I'm gonna go through what is my process for setting up a new site. Uh, so I'm gonna show you quickly what that does. So basically I just run a command, I go sudo site setup and i'm going to call it wordpress hyphen develop for now um read my long password oh can't even type my password right uh i really should connect that to my fingerprint reader but anyway so now what this does this uses apache in the ubuntu server it sets up a virtual host for me so it does all the similar kind of things it's something like a laragon or a or a um what are the others local wp whatever setting up a clean site for you with a local test url um, and if i go to the way this is configured on my site is i have a local uh, wp local env directory i have a sites directory and then inside of my sites i have any sites that i'm working on and there you'll see is wordpress hyphen develop so if i create let's actually pop into that folder there so let's go and open that up uh, local env sites wordpress develop so currently it's empty, uh, there is no code there. And if I create a new PHP file, for example, so let's just call it index.php, uh, and I say echo hello WordPress develop, echo I've typed wrong, there we go. Uh, and I test this out, so we go wordpress-develop.test. There you'll see hello WordPress develop. So this is my local environment that I use. It's very similar to any other local development environment that is not specific to WordPress, that just creates blank sites for you to then work on whatever code you're working on. Um, so with that in mind, to be able to, to, to use the WordPress develop from Git, the first step is the same. The first step, you still need to uh, check out the code. But what, I, what you will need to do is you will need to check out the code into the folder that you've created for your local site. So I'm going to go to CD local env sites WordPress develop. Uh, and you could obviously, depending on how your local environment, your local development environment works, you could just delete this folder and then create the new one by running git checkout and all of that. Um, but if the, let's say the folder name is slightly different or whatever the case may be, then what you can do is you can still run this command, git clone, Da, 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 da. Um, and you then you can use a, I think it's a full stop or a period at the end of that command. So space, full stop or space period. And what that'll do is that'll tell Git to clone all that code inside of the current directory. Um, so if I run that command, uh, already exists. Oh wait, is that is that right? Maybe it's that. Um, no. 
I can't remember. I'll have to do some research. Uh, get clone inside current directory. Uh, I know there is a way to do this, and it's driving me crazy now. Uh, da, 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 da. Test. Yeah, there we go. Come on. Oh, it's a full stop. I thought it was a full stop. Uh, hang on, yeah, it's just, I thought this would work. I'm confused. Um, okay, well then the other way you could do it is you could... See if I can get this working here. So that's the other way you could do it. Inside of this folder, you can go dot forward slash WordPress develop. And basically what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to clone all of the code inside of whatever your local environment uh, folder is. I just want to see that that's doing what I expect it to do. Uh, no, it's not. It's <laughs> cloning it into this folder, which is not what I wanted. Um, I'm annoyed now because as far as I know, that's supposed to work. Um... Okay, let's just see here. That's not what I wanted. So let's try this again. So let's go on minus RF, WordPress develop. Let's go back up one and then let's say git clone and then let's point it to the WordPress develop directory. Let's see if that works. Oh, maybe because it's not empty. So I've done this before and I'm sure it works. So let's just go rm minus rf star. Let's just delete everything inside of this directory. Uh, yes. And then let's try the get clone command again. Because as far as I know, this should work. Basically just telling it to clone it into this current directory. Maybe it's all these other things. So let's uh, rm dear store and rm dear. There we go. Okay, so Git doesn't like the fact that there are other files there. Uh, the idea comes from PHP Storm. It creates what's known as an IDA, IDEA folder, which stores sort of PHP Storm settings. I don't know why there's a DS store in that directory, uh, but that is the command that I remember working. Uh, and it's probably because I created the idea because I opened up PHP Storm to create that file. That's the problem. So there we go. Um, I learned something today. <laughs> cool. So once that's downloaded, by default, if you're running any kind of custom environment, um, the folder that it creates is going to be your document root or your web root. And it's going to be looking for um, your, your index.php file and whatever else to be able to serve the site. So what, what you will notice once this is all checked out, so now let's open up this again. You might notice that the actual source directory is the one that contains all of those files. So if I was to browse to WordPress develop test right now, um, it actually doesn't give me um, anything useful to work with. And if I have a look here in the root, you'll see that I don't have any index.php file, index.html file, or anything else to work with. So what I then need to do is I need to point to the SRC directory. That will then show this page. Um, and that then tells you you're running WordPress, but without the JavaScript and CSS files. These need to be built. Before running the task, you need to install the dependencies. You need to, to do this, you need to have NPM installed, and then you run and off you go. So you still do the same thing. You still run NPM install um, as per normal. So inside of WordPress develop, going to run NPM install. Um, yeah, WP Meister, I'm aware what the default directory file is, but I've never had that problem where it being there is causing the problem. So I think it was the IDEA file or folder that was giving me that problem there. Because um, that's never, I've never known the DS store to give me that issue. So it must be the PHP Storm IDEA folder that was the issue there. Okay, so now you just need to make sure that 
npm is available by installing node using whichever way you want and then you run npm install and then once you've got npm install um, run then you need to run the either the dev environment or run the watcher or whatever the case may be but then everything runs from the source directory um, so let me wait for this okay that's finished so now i'm going to go npm run watch no not npm run watch i'll go npm run dev just for the sake of it um, so if we go do that um, and depending on how you're working with WordPress, if you want to contribute to JavaScript things, you might need to run the file watcher. If you want to contribute to PHP things, you might need to not. Um, but it's always a good idea to run the, the first build um, and then go from there. Yeah, that's doing its thing. Um, so let me show you what this looks like over here. So it's still giving us that error because we haven't built any of those files. So it does specifically wait for this, this process to finish. Um, it's almost there. Come on. <laughs> I suppose this is the, the upside of a live stream is you don't expect me to be talking all the time. <laughs> Um, okay, now it's running all the dev stuff. Okay, almost there. Let's see. Okay, it's starting to, okay. So, and then what you end up with, so this doesn't quite finish yet, but what you then end up with is you end up with the standard WordPress five minutes install. So you will need to manually install the database um, uh, to get this all working. So you will need to have some way to access your local, your local development environment database. I use phpMyAdmin. Um, so I'm gonna quickly log into there. And I've already got this WordPress develop uh, database that gets created for me. So I'm going to copy those details there. I'm just gonna check if this is, okay, this is watching, so that, that's fine. Uh, and so now I can go through the process and I can do the five minute install. So that's the database name. The username in this case is root, the password is password. Uh, it is localhost and that is the default prefix. Uh, and then you can run the installation. And then that's your standard WordPress local installation. So I just call this WordPress develop um, and I'll just go username, password. I don't mind about the weak password and we'll go WordPress develop.test uh, and I'll just discourage. Cool. And then that's the standard installation done. Um, and you're using, you know, you're using whatever your local, your preferred local development environment is configuring it manually yourself, but you get the same, the same result. So how you do this is entirely up to you. Um, whether you want to use WPENV, the local, in, the local development environment that way, whether you want to use whatever your local current development environment is, you have some options available to you. Uh, for each of those options, you will need to run the NPM install things and the, and the dev and all of that to get it going. But then eventually you get to this point um, where it's all working. The other thing I like to do, you'll notice that it's running on the SRC directory right now. I don't really like the fact that it's doing that. So the other thing I like to do is I have the option to um, SSH into my um, no, can't spell today. I have the option to SSH into my local uh, virtual instance. And so what I like to do is I like to edit the uh, the Apache virtual host, Apache two sites enabled. Um, and then what I do is I point the document root to the, um, the SRC directory and I point the directory directive to point to the same directory. And then what's cool about that is that I once I've done that, um, I think there for a second. 
once I restart Apache, then I just have to go to the, the, the web roots of my local development environment and it all just works. Um, the reason that's not working, the reason it's showing um, issues with the, the, um, the, the CSS there is because I have not updated my site options. Um, so ideally I should have made that change before I change things on the server. So currently my, my site URL and my home are pointing to WordPress WordPress test SRC, which I need to remove. Um, and this one as well. So that's why I don't do the install until I've made that change on the virtual server. Uh, so now if we go here, now this all should be, there we go. It's all working beautifully. And if we navigate to the admin page, it takes us to the admin page. We can log in. Um, no, no. <laughs> You can tell it's my second week back at work. I've forgotten how to type. <laughs> um, and there we go. And it's all working. Okay. So that's if you're using your own custom environment, if you don't want to use the, the environment suggested by um, by the core team, you're more than welcome to. You just have to do a few things slightly differently. Um, I think I think that 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 sites uh, that local environments like local WP and DevKinster. Uh, because they're WordPress focused, I think they might offer a way to get this all set up within that local environment. Uh, but if you're using something like, as I said, if you're using Laragon, or if you're using MAMP, uh, a JAMP desktop server, uh, maybe not desktop server because that is kind of WordPress focused, but any kind of locally, local development environment where you have to install WordPress generally manually or set it up manually yourself, um, that might be the process that you'll need to go to to get the core code set up and running. Okay, um, that's where I'm going to stop today. I had set aside an hour and a half for this session. Um, yes, unfortunately, desktop server is gone. Uh, you're absolutely right. I know many people used it. Um, and it was it was one of my favorites of the WordPress um, sort of local development environments because it wasn't really tied to like a hosting platform. Um, so you didn't get all of these upsells and things. Um, so it was kind of independent and it worked really, really well. I didn't use it personally because I used other things because I'm weird that way. Um, but it was it was a very cool option. Uh, so yes, it is a pity the desktop server is gone. Um, but yes, depending on what you use and how you use it, it is possible to set up the core code base in whatever you're using. You just might need to do some workarounds or some things like that. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to call it a day here. Um, I had set aside an hour and a half for these live streams. But I think this hour is a good place to stop. So next week, my plan is as follows. We are going to go looking for issues in WordPress track. Um, my main goal for these live streams is I'm going to be focusing on the REST API component. Um, so if I click on the list of components and I scroll down here, I'm going to find the REST API here somewhere. There it is, REST API. Um, you'll see that there are in the REST API, which is not the smallest, but not the biggest either. There are 142 open tickets. Uh, there are a bunch of um, maintainers on the REST API. Um, but the REST API is what powers um, the, the block editor, the site editor, the post editor. It's all powered by the REST API. So my goal this year is to try and help with any REST API issues that are coming along. Um, I happen to enjoy working with REST APIs. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing if I can help improve uh, the REST API in WordPress. Um, Igneous Fiery, yes, this will this will be a, a weekly stream. Unless something happens to me, I plan to do this every week from, from the same time. Um, and it's going to kind of follow along from each week. So next week, I'm not going to do local development environments again. Next week, I'm going to start diving into the issues. Um, I'll probably start with um, what I might do is I might pop into the REST API channel and say to folks like, um, what what a priority? What, what do we need looked at? Um, maybe I'll chat to some of these component maintainers and find out what they see as a high priority. Um, but the goal is to focus on the REST API for maybe not the whole of 2024, uh, but for at least a good chunk of it. Um, I might every now and then branch off and do something different every week. So uh, what I'm going to try and do is kind of keep up to date with things that are happening in WordPress core. And when new releases are coming out, I might do a live stream around the new release. 
uh, or if something new pops up in my in my dashboard that I think is cool to discuss that week, we'll discuss it that week. Um, but if nothing else is available to discuss, we'll just carry on working on, on REST API issues. Um, so that's the plan for 2024. If you are somebody who used to come to my Thursday um, online workshops hosted, I'm, I'm sharing the link here, hosted on the Learn WordPress online workshops. I used to do a workshop generally every Thursday. Uh, those Thursday sessions have now switched to these Tuesday sessions. So you will find them all listed here as well. There is today's session. Um, so if you're coming through that way, you can find me there. Otherwise, you can just subscribe to me on Twitch. Uh, next question, are these sessions recorded? Yes, I will be recording and uploading these sessions. Um, I'm probably going to see if I can get them uploaded to the WordPress YouTube channel. So I'm going to pop that link in the chat as well. Um, so they will eventually end up over there. Um, basically for them to end up over there, I first need to upload them to wordpress.tv and then it gets copied over and then I need to update it there. So my goal is for every one of these um, live streams on a Tuesday to be available on YouTube by the end of the week, hopefully. Um, so my plan is on the Tuesday, I'll do the live stream. Wednesday, I'll probably upload it and then migrate it over. And hopefully by the end of the week, it's moved over. So that's the plan at least. Um, and I also I'm thinking about doing a playlist on the YouTube channel so that you can find them all in one spot. Um, and if you have any ideas for these weekly live streams, is there anything you want me to dive into in terms of WordPress development, WordPress uh, contributing to WordPress, uh, you're welcome to send me those questions and we can, and we can maybe dive into them. Um, if you want to send me questions or suggestions or anything like that, the easiest way to get hold of me is if you go to my, uh, my profile on wordpress.org, which I will share in the chat now, you will find my, my Twitter link. <laughs> uh, you will find my website, which is jonathanbossinger.com. You will find my GitHub there. Um, and you can, on my, on my website, there is a link to my email address as well. So you're welcome to connect with me in any one of those ways. Um, and yeah, if you're, if you see anything that you're unsure of or anything that you want to know about in the WordPress development space, please do reach out and let me know. And we'll see if we can look at covering some of those things in future live streams. All right, folks, I'm going to say thank you for your time and your, and your energy today. Um, thank you for everybody who helped me test out the live previews and enable them correctly for my, uh, for my plugin. I really appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions around setting up the WordPress core code base, if, you want to, if you've never tried it before and you want to try it, you're welcome to reach out to me um, in any one of these channels. Uh, I would also suggest and encourage you, if you're interested in WordPress development, to join the WordPress Slack. So if you go to chat.wordpress.org, uh, you can then sign up for the WordPress Slack. And I am available in that Slack. You can send me a DM in the WordPress Slack and, and you can ask me questions or things there. If you get stuck, you're welcome to give me a shout there and I'll do what I can to help. Um, cool. So that's going to be me for today, everybody. Thank you all for joining me. Um, any Anything else, let me know. Please do let me know. And I look forward to, to hanging out with you in these weekly streams as we dive into contributing to WordPress. Um, and hopefully we can fix some bugs together. Uh, hopefully some extra eyes while I'm doing these, these bug fixes will be, will be helpful. I will say this as well. As we move forward and as we're trying to fix bugs, it probably will be a less, chat, a less of a chatty stream um, because I'm probably going to be sitting trying to figure things out. So I hope you'll bear with me as we do that. All right, folks, thank you so much. Uh, it's been lovely to interact with you all today. And I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.